Welcome to this tutorial on GHS scripting. Tutorial number 820 focuses on variables. So today we're going to cover using variables in GHS. This includes how to create variables and how to set values for variables. And then we're going to expand on how to combine those two abilities to do math using variables. But first a brief disclaimer. Uh, this presentation is for instruction purposes only. It is not to be used in engineering for construction. And I am not a representative of Creative Systems. Uh, this is unofficial training only, based upon my own knowledge and experiences. For the official training, you can contact Creative Systems at the information on the bottom of your screen. I highly recommend it. It's quite informative. Right, so variables. Uh, GHS does allow you to define variables. And these are uh, essentially placeholders for information. They allow you to you know, take information and store it in them. And the important part is you can then update that information and change it. This is a pretty central concept of programming. It gets used all the time. So how do you actually use variables in GHS? What's the syntax for that? So step number one is you have to create the variable. Step number two is you have to set a value for that variable. And then finally, step number three, you get to use it in your code. Uh, the way you do that is you take whatever the name is for your variable and you surround it in brackets. So the GHS command is your variable name right here, surrounded by the curly brackets. For example, uh, this would be a way to use a variable. Is You've got curly brackets around the name draft. Now, of course, it has to be the name of a variable you've already created. Uh, you can also reference the variables that are built into GHS, uh, but you cannot actually create new variables built into GHS. You can only reference ones that are already created. Okay, so how do you create your own variables? Well, the first thing you have to know is that there are two types of variables that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, two types of information. GHS has other types, but these are the two I'm going to talk about. Uh, the first type is a string variable. Uh, that's just straight letters and words. So you type something as a string, GHS thinks it's a pure set of characters. Now the other type is a real variable. Uh, this is also the default type that GHS will use when you just simply create a variable without specifying the type. Uh, real variables are meant to be numbers, decimal numbers specifically, that you can do math on. Yeah, so you can add 1 plus 2 to a real variable, and GHS understands the answer should be 3. Uh, if you try to do 1 plus 2 in a string variable, GHS thinks what you're doing is the text 1 plus 2. OK, so how do you actually declare a variable? How do you create it? Uh, so the GHS command is variable, and then you have parentheses here. Within the parentheses, you type the name of your variable. And we're, in our case, we're only talking about real or string variables. Uh, then you type the name of your variable, whatever name you want it to be. It can be numbers and letters, uh, but it can only be 12 characters long. And then this last part here is optional. You don't always have to include this last part, but you can do, right at the declaration phase, you can do equals and value, uh, where that value, that's the initial value of your variable. So for a string variable, it would be some initial text. For a real variable, it would be some initial number. So for example, if I want to create the variable, let's say print path, that would be C colon GHS path. Uh, that's not a, the actual path, by the way. I just made that up. Um, and you lo notice that when I created it, I had to tell GHS that it was a string variable. If I had left out the string part, GHS would assume that it was a real variable, and it'd get annoyed because it's saying, why are you trying to put letters inside a number? OK. Well, now that you've created the variable, now you also have to be able to set variables. And that's how you set the value for your variable. Important here, this is also how you change your variable to a new value. 
So you have to use the set command to update the value of the variable. Uh, the GHS command is set uh, whatever your variable name equals whatever your new value is. So for example, if I wanted to set my print path and change it to a new drive letter, for example, I would do set print path equals D colon GHS new path. Now notice that when I'm doing this set command, I have to refer to variables that have already been created. Can't just reference something that doesn't exist. Okay, now that set command is more powerful than you know. Uh, the set command allows you to do math with your variables as well. But before we talk about exactly how you do that, I need to really take a moment to talk about how math operates in GHS. In GHS, GHS does not respect the order of operations. It does not follow that. It is only a direct sequence of numbers is how GHS interprets the math. So take, for example, um, 4 plus 3 times 2. Correct math would respect order of operations, and it would know that you do multiplication before addition. So you do 2 times 3, that's 6, plus 4 equals 10. GHS does not do that. GHS starts with the first two numbers it finds. So it will do 4 plus 3 is 7 times 2, it's 14. That's how GHS does that. So you have to remember with variable math that you have to work out the order of operations for yourself. Now, as to how do we actually do the math? Uh, we use the set command again. And what we're going to do now is add some extra keywords in there to do the, the math itself. Now, here are our, our math keywords. Uh, you can't use math symbols. GHS does not know math symbols. It knows keywords. But if you look at this list here, um, it's a pretty good set of keywords. It gives you a fair amount of functionality. So we've got add, subtract, multiply, divide, raise things to the exponent of some power. Uh, we can take a base 10 logarithm. We've got sine, cos, and tangent. We've got absolute values and square root. So we can do a fair amount of math with GHS. It's just a little clunky in the syntax. Here's an example. So let's take the equation of the sine of x plus 3 raised to the power of y. OK. How do you code that simple math equation into GHS? Well, first off, we have to create three variables, number one. So we've got a variable here, x, a variable y, and then we need a third variable to store the output of all of that. Okay, so I also had to create them with initial values, you notice. Uh, I've just picked 0 and 3 in there, but you do need to put in some initial values for your variables. Right. Now you notice I didn't have to create an initial value here. That's because I'll be setting that. Right, so what I'm going to do is rather than typing this all as one single equation at once, that won't work because GHS would not respect order of operations. So instead, what I have to do is type out step by step each step of this equation. So the first thing I do is set out equals x plus 3. And notice here how it worked. Um, I set out equals, but I'm using my variable in my code here. So that has the curly brackets. But the uh, variable I'm assigning, assigning to does not have curly brackets. So out equals cur curly brackets x plus 3. Right, now I have to do the item of raising it to the power of y. So my value right now is 0 plus 3. Good, I've got that in there. Now I have to do set out equals out. It's going to take whatever the current value of out is. So right now my current value of out is 3. So out equals 3. 
to the power of y. Okay, so I'm taking 3 to the power of y, which is, in this case, happens to be 3. Right, so now, out is equal to 27. Excellent. And then the last thing I'm doing in here is set out equals sine of out. So it's going to take the sine of 27. Now, that one I can't do in my head, I'm afraid. And finally, it stores that output right there. OK, so let's practice this. For homework number 821, I would like you to modify homework number 811. And I give you a file to start with. Uh, I would like you to modify it and take that subtitle macro that was created and replace the entries there with variables. So instead of use, creating the subtitle title with uh, inputs, uh, remove the inputs and instead have the um, subtitle feed from variables. So you have to create some variables, one for each line of the subtitle, and you'll actually update those variable values throughout the, the uh, run file. And each time the subtitle runs, it will use the new values for the variables. I would also like you to create a new variable for the damage case number. Now this is going to have to be a real variable variable because it's a number. Everything else was text variables, strings. And what I want you to do is every time the reset macro executes, have that reset macro advance the damage case number by one every time it executes. So now you don't have to manually count the damage case number. Uh, the um, new damage case number macro will do it for you automatically. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it informative and educational. Uh, you can find the homework file along with the solutions and other tutorial videos at dmsonline.us. Thanks very much.